start out our pulse spear build with a long straight wooden rod and at one end we'll secure an elastic loop so here I've got this blue elastic tubing and this tubing will form into a loop like so maybe a little longer and we're gonna attach it here at the back so that as my hand stretches through the loop I can grip the, the shaft of the, the pole spear and pull this thing back and release so it goes forward. Now at the other end, the business end of it, we'll be using this wood to enclose a spear shaft, more or less, or a, a pointy bit of metal to go through our fish. And so we're gonna take about nine inches of this stainless steel rod. You don't have to use stainless, you can use regular spring steel, any rod from a quarter to three eighths of an inch will work. And this will be at the center of the dowel. Now we're gonna sharpen it and it will go straight through our fish, but without some way of keeping the fish on, you know, it would come right back off that sharpened tip. So we're gonna use something called a flopper. And this is a rounded piece of sheet metal with a hole in it. And we'll drill a hole through this spring steel shaft, attach the flopper like so. So, let me sit down that wooden rod. When this goes through the fish, the flopper toggles out and engages so the fish can't go anywhere. And we can pull it in and have it for dinner. So right now I'm deciding how long my stainless rod is gonna be because some section is gonna be embedded in my wood and I need some section to be between the end of the wood and the flopper to allow it, allow it to penetrate fully through the fish. And we're targeting, you know, medium sized fish in the Pacific Northwest. So we're gonna make that maybe six inches between the end of the wood and the beginning of the flopper. And then we need a little bit of room uh, after the flopper to accommodate our sharpened tip. And so we'll make that maybe two inches because we might sh be shooting this thing into the rocks. Let's see, two, and then maybe another six inches to the wood, which is there, and another, our drill bit can go in about yay far. So that is gonna be the limit. So we need to be able to loosely fit this 330 seconds flopper pin, again, any stainless pan or, or small metal rod will work as well because we'll peen it over later to make the, the pin will work. And we're going to be drilling a hole in one of these rods to allow this pin to drop through and secure that flopper onto it. And in this case we've got a 330 seconds pin and so we picked a 764 drill bit so just a smidge larger than the diameter of this pin to be able to accommodate that. Here we go. And so we can see that this side already has a little nubbin to keep it, the flopper secured. But this other side does not, and we're gonna need to take a hammer and mushroom out that side of the pin to allow it to retain that uh, flopper. And you could theoretically do this with just about any rod, any rod you can peen over. And to peen over, we're going to just pick a hammer, any hammer with um, a little bit of a rounded surface. And it's all about short, light, off, you know, off direction and stroke. Um, as we, you know, exert force here, as well as in the other hole that we drilled for the actual uh, metal shaft, we're going to want to put some 
support around it to prevent the wood from cracking and so that'll be in the form of some paracord and perhaps a little bit of glue to keep it in place. So this is I think that's probably gonna be a little bit better. So give myself maybe another inch. And so we're using maybe like two feet of rubber here. And that's what we're gonna to use to tie our band. All right. There we have it. Bam, our rubber. Next, we want to create a wishbone. Let's call it a wishbone. And I've got a bunch of them. Tie line. And we will use this pre-tied wishbone. Just a string with two fat knots on it. I guess we could use this one. Any, you know, needle nose pliers here, surgical tweezers. Some silicone lube. And we'll get this guy and insert it. And there's our little cinch down knot. And this style of tie can hold in excess of well over 150 or 200 pounds, given the materials um, you know, are strong enough. So as long as it's tied right, it won't fail. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And if you'd like to learn how to tie this knot, there are quite a few fantastic video tutorials all over the internet. All you have to do is look up cinch knot and spearfishing. And there our cinch knot is again. And then cinch it tight. All right. There is our rubber loop. So this is West Systems G-Flex. It's a semi-flexible epoxy that binds to just about anything and it's my personal favorite to put spear guns together and anything else that's difficult to bind, requires a little bit of flexibility, that kind of thing. And this is what we're going to use to secure much of the line on these um, guns, as well as the, the shafts into their pockets. So it's just a 50-50 mix. All right, next we'll just mix these guys. Start sharpie. Mark that off. And some epoxy up to there. And the idea will be we want to completely cover both mating faces with epoxy so you don't have any dry spots. So I'm just going to kind of. The idea is we want to get enough epoxy in here where we're completely filling any air pocket that would be between the shaft track the shaft and the uh, wooden dowel. And we are ready to get this guy in there. We're gonna position over our cup because we're gonna get a pretty, we hope, we get a pretty decent amount of ooze. So I'm just gonna lean on this for three or four minutes just so that this shaft doesn't come back out. Any air bubbles that I've compressed in there might re-expand and push the shaft out just a little bit and we don't want an air pocket to be in there behind this shaft so when it hits a rock or a fish or anything else like that it's fragile. All right and next we're gonna create you could just tie this on I'm gonna use a little bit of epoxy um, here uh, to keep this paracord really tightly wrapped so that it never really comes undone ever. I'm gonna really try to tighten, tie this on very tight, as tight as we possibly can. I'll leave a little free end to burn off later. I 
make sure they don't fray. The only thing we really have left to do is add our grip. And for that, we're gonna use a pretty similar process. We're just gonna kind of pick an area, probably about here, and add a grip. And so I'm gonna mark off with my Sharpie. That grip is gonna be maybe six inches, seven inches long. last time uh, we saw this beer it's now finished and wrapped up and what we've done is we've added and finished this grip here um, it's not required to have a grip but it just you know helps you keep your you know keep your hand on the on the spear in a loaded position without cramping up and we've also coated the, the whole length of the wood in a in a finishing um, sealing oil we've chosen to use tongue oil perhaps the the most traditional finish uh, but really you can use any sealing product you want any waterproof sealing product. And what we've also done is we've tied our pole spear band here. It's a loop of elastic um, with a, a wishbone attached to connecting the, the hollow rubber. And so we are going to thread that through this hole that we've made here at the rear of the spear, stabilized with these two tie-ins. And so we thread the loop in and take our remaining Thread it back through the loop that we've just made. And there we are, we have our attached rubber. And so we are now ready to go. So to load it, what we'll do, is we will twist as we pull back. And that is our loaded spear. Ready to take it. Back. 